we have here list boxes and combo boxes. List boxes and combo boxes you've seen, combos are sometimes considered drop-down boxes. And this little presentation is going to get you set up for your next assignment. The list box. First of all, examples on the right over here. It's a simple box. List items, just as you see. Um, if the items become too long, then it, you end up with a scroll bar over here on the right hand side. Uh, the numbering on the list box uh, starts at zero. There's an index in there and uh, the index has a zero base is what we call zero base numbering. So it's right here. This first item fish then would be index zero. There are a number of methods to use on list boxes to get things out of it and to find out things and to remove things and the methods are going to be described in a little more detail in a few seconds here. Okay. Um, you place the name of the list box in the front of it and then you put a period to do it. An example is right down here if you look at this one. For example, um, if I was going to use list shop as my index then uh, I wanted to get the item that was selected I would say list shop dot list, uh, list shop list is the name of my list then I put a dot right there's the dot and then I put a selected item that would be I would getting be getting the selected item and notice it has to be returned into a string variable if you don't want to get the item if you just want to get the number of the item in the list you use an index or an I an integer variable here and the same thing uh, the name of the list box first its period right there and then get selected index is how you do that one okay so uh, here are some examples of some list box methods if we wanted to add something to a list box uh, we would say the name of the list box again right out here in the front just like we did before and then we'd say items and then we'd say add under the items there's a number of different things you'll use so if we want to add something we put in parentheses the item we want to add this whole thing's added to the list box then to remove an item again the name of the list box the word items and then the word remove and you can get the exact match it's got a match exactly including number of spaces it doesn't look like that here but that's because the font I'm using compress some of the spaces when I copy it down at any rate if it at matches exactly then it will remove the item now sometimes you don't want it to remove the item because it removes the first occurrence and if you have two of these in the list and you happen to click on the second one to get the data out of it and you got this data and you put it in the remove statement it would remove the first one not the second one so sometimes you want to remove it at a specific location and here's how to do that again shop list is the name of the list items remove at and then this gives you the location remember we're talking about zero based again okay so let's get back to here and here's one if we just want to know the count of the items in the list box say we want to know how many of them again an integer variable out here to catch the number this then items and of course we ask for the count okay uh, these things can be nested within one another to get information within each item. Combo boxes, almost the same as list boxes in, in the items and things, however the drop downs are different. This is a drop down right here. This would indicate when you drop this down you would get a list that may look like this. Okay. Again, if the list is too long you're going to get a scroll bar. Okay, when you clicked on an item, it would come up in this text area and you could retrieve it from the text property of the particular combo box you were looking at. Now, let's see. Um, methods of combo box, they're very similar. We have one extra thing here. We have a text property that I want to call your attention to. We have all the others, select items, select index, um, that should be a capital by the way right there um, in the items we have add count remove and remove that just as before the text property is usually where you grab the thing at so for example if you've selected something it drops up into the text property then from the text property you move it over you can move it over to someplace else directly by using 
selected item just as you can in this in the um, uh, list box okay all right let's see um, methods are the same again we do it just the same manner here's an example down here s food items I can get it from text this could be placed behind a button or something like that and you just pick it right out of there no problem okay so let's go to the next thing strings now these I'm gonna go through very quickly we you should take down and pause the recording occasionally to take down notes in this section but I'm not going to do a lot of talking here two things you should understand in two terms concatenation and parsing concatenation is putting strings together and parsing separating them for example if we wanted to put some strings together here we go um, total string is equal to the first string an ampersand we use just like this let's see where's my marker here there we go there and the next string you can also get numbers total string you can use variables to put things in strings here's an ampersand and then here's a number variable okay so I've used that and that will convert that to a string you could probably put the words to string in on this also to get it to transfer to string but that's something else alright so let's go on and look these quickly these are ways to parse strings here's how to get some ASCII codes when you want some ASCII codes you just put a character in ASCII and that's all there is to it if you put a string in there it takes the first character okay. uh, here's how to get a character if you have the ASCII code you put the ASCII code right in here 65 happens to be the ASCII code for an A and it will give you the character A and this is a good way to get things that aren't on the keyboard now talking about formatting when you want strings to be in a certain format or a certain shape you can format them this is used a lot in time we use system defined we use user defined so I'm gonna go through these quickly now in this case we've got a string out here that we're catching this thing we say format now is a function that basically uh, gets the time and date so if you want the time only you'd say long time here this is a system defined format that shows the time here's long date gives you the date you can use the D also to get long date <clears throat> in currency this is one we're noticing if you have some number here or some variable containing a number there you can simply say currency and it will return the currency uh, based on the um, correct type of number, numbering system your computer has been set up for. If you've been set up for pounds, it'll return a pound sign on it and everything like that. Uh, you can use numbers. Now here are some, some standard ones with numbers. Uh, you can use numbers. You get a thousand with a general. This is what goes in the quotes. Currency, of course, you've seen an example. Standard, percent, and you can use the yes, no, true, false. And what happens is if it's a zero in your variable, you're going to get no or false or off the negative responses if it's something other than a zero either negative or positive you will get yes true or on here are some string formats that um, are user defined now user defined means that uh, the user actually sets up the way it looks like and you have to know the coding for this so um, you put a number sign around dates and times to get them to go in as a date and here's a variable that's been declared as date and here's a string if we want to pull out a string so if we had something like this if we had that thing up there here's what would be returned if we put H colon M colon S it would return the hours minutes and seconds as you can see here on the slide I'm not going to go through all of these things um, format 23 simply returns a 23 uh, again string formats you can get these uh, special characters uh, and the number sign is a placeholder for numbers uh, we'll go into this in a little more detail later I'll pull this off and we'll go into that in a little more detail and this is how you set these up with the number signs the zeros and the ones there's a percent sign on it here's how to get dollars set up in formatting okay. get char simply returns a series of characters um, we're going to um, have a string here of ABC if I say uh, get char 4 it returns a D because I asked for the fourth character right there in string basically searches one string for another string and uh, returns that particular string 
lowercase and uppercase converts strings to lower and uppercase, and here are some examples of how that happens. You can use as lower as the string, and it returns it as a string. Uh, left and right returns the right end of a string or a left end of the string, depending on how many characters you have. And there's some examples. If you pause and study them, you'll be able to see those. Length returns the length of the string. There's a number of times you want to do that. Trim actually gets all the spaces off both ends of the string, so you don't have any extra spaces on either side. Space creates a string of spaces. And str dupe, which is string dupe, duplicates either a character over and over again a number of times or a string over and over again a number of times. Um, here are some more functions. Let's see. Uh, this is the mid. It takes a um, string out of the middle of a string based on a starting position and number of characters. And there's some examples. So you can study that and see how those work. Uh, here's one that replaces something within a string. You can actually replace one character or a whole small string within another string. It's like your search and replace function. Here's comparing strings. Now, you can put if one string equals another string or is less than another string, but sometimes that doesn't work so well. It's better to actually do string compares because then upper and lower case do not make a difference. Now the assignment. And basically, here's what I want you to do. You're going to make sort of a little program that's going to could be on a Palm Pilot or a, some portable device. And basically, this program is going to have a combo box right there. And you'll drop down the combo box. And when you click on that, the item will move to the shopping list. And then from the shopping list, when you click on it, the item, uh, when you double click on it, the item will move over to the shopping cart. Okay. If you single click on it, you can then click on this remove button down here. All right. And that remove button will basically remove it. Just single clicking on an item in here basically puts it in a display area here. And what I'm going to do now is end this PowerPoint and show you how that works. But first, a quick review. You're going to need something, a drop down list with a bunch of store items. You're going to need a shopping list. You're going to need a shopping cart. Both of these are list boxes here. You're going to be able, need to be able to put things over to here. Oh, yeah, and when you double click here, it knocks it back into here. Okay, so double clicking. You'll have to hit the double click. All right, so let's finish this off real quick and go to an example here. Here's my example running down here. If I come down here, see, I got an extra button here that you guys don't need. Uh, it's called Get Combo Text. I've got it so that it actually takes whatever is in uh, this window right up here. So, for example, if I, uh, let's see, this window right here. So right now, selected food items. I'd never be able to get that into the shopping list. All right, so let's say if I did this, if I hit combo text, you see how it went over to the shopping cart right away? Hit it again. It goes right over because it's taking it out of the window. All right, now let's start doing the food items. If I come down here, I can put ice cream, and that goes into my shopping list. Come down, I put this down here. That goes into my shopping list. Let's get a few more on the shopping list. I'm going to scroll this down a little further. I've got all these weird characters. I'll tell you about those in a minute. That's because I put uh, special tab characters, and they show up here, and they don't show up there. They just nicely space everything out into even columns. So I've been trying to get rid of those, and I haven't figured out a way to do that. So you're not going to be required to do that. All right, so we've got that over here. Now what happens? Let's say I take uh, Angel Hair Pasta, and I click it. And notice how it appears down in this area down below. And if I hit Remove Item, it will immediately knock it out. If I double-click something here, like melons, notice how they go over. Ice cream, they go get removed from this box and move over to that box. What happens if I double click over here? Select food item. Bingo. It goes from this box back into the shopping list box because maybe I take it out of the cart and put it back in my on the thing and I want to keep it on the shopping list for another store or something. And finally we can clear the shopping cart. So those are the types of things I want you to be able to do in your shopping list program.